Okay, my name is Patricia McClellan Terrell. I write under the pen name P.M. Terrell. And today I want to talk to you about the big move in books. So moving to a new location is a theme that you can find from literary classics to contemporary genre. In a physical move, the hero leaves behind everything that has meant something to them everything that they've known. They leave behind family and friends, hobbies, careers, vocations, volunteer work, a constellation of people, acquaintances, from those that they're close to, to those that they may barely know. They leave the familiarity of home and that can extend to everything that affects a daily life from the local grocery store to the dentist or hairdresser or even those things that they would pass by every single day and barely even notice. The move throws the hero into the unknown. Perhaps they move to a small town in pursuit of serenity or a new start on life, which is a theme that I used with Vicki's Key. Inevitably, something happens. In Vicki's Key, it was the realization that the house that Vicki had moved into was haunted. It could be a horror theme such as the Amityville Horror. Um, it could be a comedy, like The Money Pit. It could be a theme found in horror, thrillers, suspense, or even romance. The start of a brand new happy life or comedies. Regardless of the genre, the hero encounters the unexpected. And they may go through trials and tribulations before emerging on the other side. Better for having made that move. In the process of the move, they encounter a transformation. They discover strengths, talents, and even renewed hope, purpose, and optimism. My mother was born in Spring Hill, Tennessee, long before the Saturn plant moved there and later closed and another, I think a Honda dealer or a Honda manufacturer took over. And in fact, when my mom was growing up, Spring Hill had a population of 416 people, give or take a death or a birth <laughs> occasionally. Now it has swollen to more than 37,000, much of that growth taking place after 2010. My mom was born before um, the house had a, a telephone. In fact, she was almost grown before they got their first phone. And her grandparents who lived in Murray County never did have indoor plumbing. It was expected that my mother would never leave Spring Hill, but that she would spend her entire lifetime in those few square miles, population 416, just as her mother had done and her grandmother. But mom married a man that would become an FBI special agent. And the FBI was transferring agents on a routine basis. By the time that I came along, they were living in Washington, D.C. My older brother and sister had already been born in Illinois. Over the next 10 years after my birth, we would go from living in downtown Washington, D.C. to Maryland suburbs, to Cleveland, Ohio, to Monterey, California, Pacific Grove, California, Waldwick, New Jersey, 
Washington Township, New Jersey, and eventually to the Mississippi Delta. The woman that was accustomed to living in that tiny, small southern town where one could walk to all four points and, and literally cross the entire town, everybody knew her name, to living in an apartment in the capital of the United States, homes in the North that were completely different from anything that she had known and a completely separate culture. I never experienced fear or trepidation when we were told that we were moving because my mother always made a, a game out of the move. Moving excited and invigorated her and she passed those positive thoughts down to her children. She treated each move like the new chapter that it was, knowing doors were going to open, lives would be changed, we would have richer experiences for having made the move. Not every move was positive. Um, at one point, we lived in a, a tiny apartment with um, three children, eventually a fourth, in downtown DC. And that had to have been very difficult for my mother with the, the thin walls that apartments had back then. And I remember, however, how she would always look for the positive. And I remember one trip where she took the, the three of us children on a bus ride in downtown DC. And the only reason that she did it was to just um, get us out of the house. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, my brother did put a pee up his nose at one point and she had to take him on the bus to the doctor. So maybe it wasn't completely to just get out of the house. But I do remember how proud she was that she had gotten on that bus, not only in this strange big city, but that she had done it with three small children. Though I was um, convinced our home in Mississippi when we moved there was haunted, and to this day I still think something was very odd about that house, she always found the silver lining and she was convinced that I just had an active imagination and that it was really um, dreams of Barnabas Collins that was haunting me. But as I look back at my moves, I remember um, participating in the Monarch Butterfly Parade in California. I remember the swing set that I loved in Cleveland, and of all things, I remember the sidewalk and how it was so buckled from the huge trees um, and the roots that were coming up underneath the sidewalk, and how we used to play these games as though we were going to Middle Earth or something because of that sidewalk. I remember Christmas in shorts. Um, pushing a, uh, a little baby carriage, doll carriage, um, along the sidewalk in shorts on Christmas Day in California. And I remember another Christmas in New Jersey where I was wearing so many layers of clothing that I couldn't even <laughs> bend my elbows. Later, I would move from the sleepy town that we had moved to in Mississippi back to Washington, D.C. by myself. Um, it had been the place of my birth, but we had moved before I had very many memories of it beyond that bus ride in that tiny apartment. But I used the experiences that I had moving from Mississippi to Washington, D.C. in my first book, Kickback, and the sequel, Ricochet, about um, Sheila Carpenter moving from a small town in the South to the big city. The heroes in books might relish the move like my mom did, 
or they might seek to avert it, like the reluctant hero. But when the book opens to find our hero heading for a new place or arriving in a new place, we know we're in for a ride because we know that whatever they find is going to transform them forever and it's going to make our hero into the person that they were meant to be. I hope that you enjoyed this video blog and I hope to do a whole lot more of them so let me know what you think about the hero and about the moves.